year that I had started, I remember worrying about her being in Spanish too, because field hockey, I was running a little bit over some of our review classes. And I remember the first time my heart melted over this girl when I asked her if she wanted to move down to Spanish one. She never moved down to Spanish one. But there was something magical that happened. She just lit up. And not with the kind of excited lighting up, but the like lady kind of lighting up. <laughs> so she showed me what was. She has been with me all the way to Spanish AP and is by far one of my best students. I am very proud of you. Um, it was nice meeting her because it is rare that you meet a fighter that doesn't have to go around telling everybody that she is one. And she was probably, I can say, and I think you know this story, you're the best young student teacher I have had. Wow. I've learned some really important things from you. All right, I think it's your turn, come on. <laughs>
regardless, I always found it interesting to sit and listen to Mr. Bush talk about our paradigms, our worldviews, and in that classroom is where my paradigm was altered for the better. I learned about child labor in Nigeria, poverty, guns, germs, and field, Jared and Diamond. <laughs> Sophomore year was not anything special. At the time, I was really happy and confident with how life was going, so I put an effort with my work and even got involved in more school activities. I joined a few clubs, the Amnesty International Club, which focuses on human rights and peace. This was started by a classmate, So Young, and Mr. Bush as the director, so super welcome. I had a lot of fun that year doing Zoom meetings online with the starting members of the club. We talk about various social issues that we hear about in the news or on the Amnesty website. Each week we would choose a case to support and petition for change. We wrote letters to Congress, social activists in oppressive countries, and even hosted two different walkouts associated with gun violence in schools. This was when I began thinking about injustices around the world, and this group helped me introduce me to a world where I can make a difference with other like-minded people. That year I got to know so many different people, including the teachers. I think I was able to branch out and learn more uh, about what interests me, and this was also the year that I became closer with Dr. Laura Silverman, my favorite teacher here that I can go to for help in my academics, college plans, and even my personal life. I had Doctora for a Spanish three this year, that was sophomore year. And Doctora, I am so sorry you had to deal with math or I was on the floor in your classroom that one time. <laughs> uh, we carried out many shenanigans in your room and I still don't quite know how you can be so patient with our weird tomfoolery, whether it be drawing faces all around your room, doing random acrobatics, and a few weeks back when we used your curtains like a fort. <laughs> I look up to you so much and appreciate the help you have given me throughout all of these four years. I'm going to miss our lunches in your room your wonderful stories and guidance. Doctor was someone who helped make my life so much easier. Now let me talk about someone who made my life so much harder. Geometry class was of course my worst class. <laughs> Everyone told me geometry would be easy, but I guess it's just me who doesn't understand what a square is versus a circle, <laughs> or that a triangle has three sides. It turns out, the difference between a square and a circle is that a square has four equal sides and a circle has infinite sides, I think. <laughs> the reason I don't know for sure is because when I would raise my hand to ask a question, I was greeted with sass and sarcasm from an adult faculty member that I will not name. <laughs> I was failing the class by the end of the year, no thanks to the new substitute that came in halfway to cover for the sabbatical my original teacher took. But I will hand it to the sub. She did at least try to teach me when I asked questions. It's not her fault that I gave up immediately at the beginning of the year. Besides, she basically saved my grade after all, from an F to a D. <laughs> it's actually really sad how inept I am when it comes to finding the hypotenuse of a right triangle. <laughs> that year, due to new friends, I was forced to join the musical for the first time ever. <laughs> <laughs> I did not think I would spend time on the theater productions here because of my involvement with sports. I'm actually surprised that I was able to balance a musical, field hockey, and academics all at once. I would not be able to do that now, I know that for sure, because I suffered when this year's spring drama came around. What I didn't know at the time was that I would become involved with all the productions after that. Later that year, I auditioned for the spring drama and got the amazing honor of playing Express Man 1. <laughs> <laughs> this was probably the most uncomfortable thing I've done in my life here at Doc. I had never acted before and I was not going to start then. I felt very disconnected from the rest of the cast because they were doing this for years while I just waltzed in out of nowhere with all my stage crew and writing experience. Sure, it can be helpful sometimes to leave your comfort zone, but I truly believe that at that stage in my life, I was not ready to stand in front of so many people and say lines I didn't know how to deliver due to my lack of experience and practice. The reason I didn't get much practice was because I was such a small role that I wouldn't be able, what I wouldn't be called to practices as often as the main characters. To be honest, the whole experience seems like a blur and I can barely remember most of it. Moving on, for the sophomore service project, I thought it would be a fun idea to head to Spruce Lake along with my friends for a weekend to help out with jobs around the wilderness and camp. I thought very wrong about it being fun. <laughs> we were forced to stand outside in the cold for hours, doing jobs that require strength, that of which, as you may know, I have a very minimal supply of. <laughs> I distinctly remember our first job because it required cleaning out the campsite of natural resources. That meant sticks. We had to remove sticks from the forest and put them in another section of the forest. <laughs> it was tedious and long and exhausting, but at least my friends Ashley and Alexa joined me. By the next day, we knew what we were in for. It was even colder that morning in Spruce Lake, and our job was to fill divots and rake small pebbles out of grass. Jobs of which I did not put my all into and complained about. Nonetheless, I think I did them well, and thankfully it got warmer as time went by. Just in time to move around 20 picnic tables with just three people. It 
wasn't all bad, though, as by the end of that, they let us rest on the tables in the sun for a few minutes before it was off to the next job. Service was an important part of that year in Bible class, and I loved becoming closer with my friends through it. The only classes that I truly enjoyed that year were Spanish class, class piano, and surprisingly, Bible. This is because it was with Mr. Bush, and most of my friend group was in that class. One memory, I one memory I remember significantly is when Mr. Bush showed us a photo of a Palestinian boy who was somehow formed from a skeleton that was a few thousand years old using computer technology. He paused the video, looked at me, looked back at the screen, then said, I, am, I see some of you in this, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> this caught me way off guard, so I immediately started laughing, but just to make matters more interesting, he had me stand up next to the screen, in front of everyone, so that they could judge if I looked like the boy. We did. Another significant memory I had in that class was the fact that this was the year Mr. Bush invested in a bread maker. Why he had it set up in his classroom instead of at home, I have no idea. But I didn't ask, because sometimes he would make bread for us since we were his first period class. Eating fresh bread and talking about Bible stories was, was my favorite part of that day. <coughs> Junior year started out roughly. I was admitted to CHOP in order to treat an eating disorder I let run my life since seventh grade. By now I was weak, strong-haired, pale, malnourished. I stayed there for about a month and spent another month in outpatient. <laughs> Even though I knew I had a problem and needed to be there, I felt so left out. For the first time, I wanted to be in school. I was missing yearbook, the musical, homework. I was missing classes with my best friend. I was missing freedom. I believe recovery led me to live more gratefully for what I have. On my first day back, I remember walking down the stairs of Rosenberger to my friends who I felt I haven't seen in ages. They hugged me and welcomed me back warmly. It was around this time that I truly began to think about how my friends have been there for me since the beginning. It's not that I didn't think so, but I guess I took them for granted until that day. Caitlin, Alexa, Claire, Matt, Ben, Ashley, Aaliyah, you guys are the best. Thank you for making these years so fun, and thank you for staying with me so this so long, even after everything. I thought that people wouldn't want anything to do with me when they found out I went to the hospital for an eating disorder. So I told you guys I had a heart problem because that was the most simplified and vague version of it. But I realized that was silly, and you guys would never toss me to the side because of something like that. Nevertheless, I appreciate it and you all so much for making my return to school as painless as possible. I started my first class off by walking into Mr. King's Bible class while they were watching a video on Luther. I was late because I was checking in at guidance, so everyone watched me come in. Not the easiest return, walking into a room of eyes staring at you. Then Mr. King turned and said to me, Oh, hi. I didn't know you were coming back today. You sit right there. I made the walk over to my chair, and when I sat down next to my classmates I had rarely spoken to in years, I was asked if I was okay and feeling better. Although small, this obviously touched me, and that is when I felt that sense of community that everyone here was always talking about. <clears throat> it definitely made me feel more thankful to the community here that supported me and the guidance counselors who actually cared. Mr. Kabachian was there for me when I needed someone to talk to, and this meant a lot to me because I had not always had good experiences with guidance counselors. He said he would help and check in on how I was doing. I'm not going to lie, I was not expecting him to follow through on what he said but he did that and more. He helped make the transition back into school comfortable and a reasonable pace for my catch-up schedule was in place. Thank you, Mr. Kabachi. This process was stressful, but it made me feel better knowing I did not have to stress alone. Due to the amount of class time I missed, I was forced to drop ceramics, one of my favorite classes. I was especially sad about this because it was with one of my favorite teachers, Mr. Swartz. Now, before I left to the hospital, I made a slug. And let me tell you, it was really cool looking. It sounds weird because who would choose to make a slug of all things in ceramics class? If you think I'm kidding, it's right here. Anyway, along with the missing, uh, missing the music one yearbook and other activities, I didn't get to finish my slug after ceramics class was cut for me because I thought Mr. Swords threw it away. I was gone for a while. I never even asked about it because I lost hope for it. I was informed multiple months later that my slug was actually still sitting in the studio in case I ever wanted to come back for it, no matter how late. In the fourth quarter of my junior year, this little guy was glazed and fired, and now he sits here before you. <laughs> Do I sound crazy? <laughs> the point of this little tidbit is that this meant a lot to me, and every time I look at this slug, I'm reminded of the consideration, empathy, and community we have.
have here at Doc and the wonderful teachers. This thing that I created became the thing I think I needed. I needed to feel productive and like I kept with it and finished something I invested time in. Even if it was just a clay slug in a ceramic class I didn't even get the quarter credit for. When I got back, I had realized that I missed the social issues trip in September and that I wouldn't be able to go with my friends. But I was now going on the trip in February. I was not looking forward to it in the slightest. The only thing that I enjoyed about it was that I had an excuse not to not do homework. Even though I was completely dreading it, I was going with Ashley and Matt, two friends that I don't get to spend that much time with as opposed to other friends who went in September. When we got to DC and began to walk around, I realized that this was actually kind of nice. It was not too cold and it was an interesting few days. One of the most valuable things I learned in those few days was about homelessness. These three people came into where we were staying and took turns telling us their story of how they became homeless and the events that led up to it, how they survived and how they got out of it. I found it admirable how they were using the pain they, fa they faced back then to do good for those who need help now. I think it was this event that made me realize that even though I am barely trudging through this tough spot in my life of transitioning back into reality, I should be grateful that I'm healthy, that I was able to be treated in a highly respected hospital like CHOP, and so privileged to be going to a good school with friends I spent my life with, taking interesting classes with teachers I have relationships with, to be living in a big house with two parents and a little brother I get along with. There are so many things in life to be appreciative about. One thing that I appreciate about Doc so much is its love for the arts and how it gives artistic students a whole day to sing and make whatever they want in friendly competition with the other grades. Arts Day has been a big event for me in the past few years and not to toot my own horn or anything, but I placed each year except ninth grade when I did not know what Arts Day really was yet. In sophomore year, I placed first in photography. In junior year, I placed second in photography. Arts Day junior year was pleasant and a day that I have fond memories of. The theme was home that year. Alexa and I have always written the skits together, and what we made that year was one of my favorites. It was called Home Sweet Old Home, which was about a man who was just admitted to a retirement home and was struggling to fit in and accept that this was his home now. Multiple people told us that we exceeded their expectations and that this was our best one yet. I felt incredibly proud of my friends and myself for putting on a great show for our classmates on one of the best days of the year. Some of you know that I haven't really always liked a particular person in our friend group. I'm so glad that we got to know each other instead of avoiding each other, Claire. Since you became more frequent in our friend group, I had to be exposed to you more, and let me tell you. <laughs> I was not happy. <laughs> And I didn't really have a reason not to like Claire, but what matters is now I do, and we're so much closer than I ever thought we would be. Thank you for making me laugh every day and doing dumb stuff with me in Doctora's room. Thank you for just being strange with me in general. You're an amazing artist, fashion expert, and have always given me the best advice and been there for me when I needed someone to talk to. You're the best. <laughs> Senior year, the big one. What will you do with it? I chose to scare myself as much as I can. The more trauma, the better euphoria I'd feel afterwards. <laughs> in order to scare myself, I decided that if I was offered an opportunity that made me uncomfortable, I'd take it. One class that helped me get out of my shell this year, also my first class, was independent studio. If you don't know what that is, it means that you can choose a type of art like photography or painting and focus on one or a few projects for the whole quarter. This helped me express artistry and tap into that side of me I'd been ignoring for a while. Up until this point, I was doing photography, but not for myself. I came into the class thinking of photography as work because I had been taking pictures for the yearbook and other school events. I think it's because of this class that I got my creativity back and it encouraged me to quit yearbook, to focus on making art for the sake of making art. Mr. Swartz would help me with various projects and give smart advice when it came to Photoshop. I learned valuable skills about film and photography, things that made me grow as a creative individual and taught me to branch out and be confident in what I make because at this point, I'm making whatever I want for myself, not for recognition or someone to tell me, oh my gosh, that's so good. And it felt really healthy. This was the perfect start to my senior year and this artistry carried on to the end of my year as well. Along with super fun classes to begin, to begin my senior year, I joined, I joined outdoor adventure and recreational games with Caitlin that year. I think every time I'm with Caitlin, reality feels a little altered <laughs> or changed, but so much more correct than it ever could be on its own. I won't go into detail about what that exactly means because in reality, Caitlin would be the only person to ever understand what that really entails, even if I were to explain it. I had a lot of fun in this class, although I was a bit intimidated at first by the canoes and kayaks and the bike riding. Caitlin and I have all 
always used to joke that we didn't even exist in these classes <laughs> because our only friends were each other. And despite our weird antics and personalities, everyone just happened to ignore us. That, and when the rest of our class would go on a bike ride, we would stay back in the parking lot or go ride around in Doc Woods. Some of my favorite memories with Caitlin were made in those gym classes. Caitlin is someone who has been there for me since eighth grade. We became closer at the end of the year and our friendship carried on into freshman year and has only become stronger since then. Caitlin is one of the best people I know and a friend I can be 100% comfortable around as well as 100% cared for. Her and I share a weird understanding of our humor and I wouldn't have it any other way. Thank you, Caitlin, for being my other half and being on my side, especially with Arts Day this year. Our crowning achievement the beautiful mistake we made. This Barbie sculpture, titled Chaos, placed first in visual arts. That day was dark in so many ways, but at the same time, kind of legendary. Our day 2019 was the weirdest day of my senior year, hands down. I watched my friends dress up as animals and pranks around the stage, and we made my dear friend Claire cry. It could have been the intense toxic fumes I breathed in Caitlin's garage the day before while making this thing, but the overall feeling of that day was really chaotic. Nowadays, I treat this sculpture like a bad omen. It brings chaos with it wherever it goes. I mean, look at it. <laughs> <laughs> to go along with my plan of making my senior year into a horror movie with a good ending, I auditioned for the spring drama again for the first time since sophomore year. I can admit I was scared going into it, but I was soon met with kind people and even kinder directors. I was taught to hone my confidence and use it to my advantage. One thing Mrs. Johnson said to me that will forever be with me is that even if you're wrong, be bold. It's better to be bold and be wrong than shy away. I took that advice with me every single day to practice and learned a lot about myself and what I can do if I just put my mind to it. After sophomore year, <clears throat> I had no idea I'd ever do this again, but I'm glad I did because the people I met through it were worth it. This was the best cast I had ever worked with in any production. Thank you guys for accepting me and cheering me on. Next and last of the things that I have opened, that opened me up and improved my growth while also scaring me, Faith Walk with Mr. Weeds. Over the 18 hours at the retreat, I talked to people I never thought I'd interact with and people I haven't talked to in years, despite going to the same school and having the same classes together. The conversations with my classmates will stay with me for a long time. One of those conversations will affect me forever when I was given the opportunity to forgive people I thought I would never talk to again. I, it felt like a weight had been taken off my shoulder. I was joking around with the people who were supposed to be my enemies. After we came back together as a group, I sat next to Mr. Weems and I told him, I'm really glad I came tonight. I'm still really glad I went back. If I could tell myself as a freshman anything, I'd go back and tell myself to let go of negative judgments and let go of grudges. If I knew that there were better lives, lives than that one, I would have made the change immediately. Speaking from experience, holding grudges isn't worth it. Having negative feelings towards people just isn't worth it. It does not have to be that deep because life is not, is not that deep. We only have one life on earth together. So why don't we empower each other instead of shying away and judging? We should be open to the choice of forgiving each other. Anyway, I am very proud to announce my plans for next year. I have been accepted into Harvard Medical School. I will be attending the <laughs> fall. Just kidding. I'm going to Arcadia University to study psychology. And we'll be doing experiments on a rat named Glue for my first year as part of the curriculum, which is probably what I'm most excited for. <laughs> Throughout my time here, I realized that freedom was not something you find in high school, but something that high school prepared you for to use in the real world. Freedom has its life in the hearts, the action, the spirits of men, and so it must be daily earned and refreshed. Also, <clears throat> else like a flower cut from its life-giving roots, it will wither and die. I can confidently say that I've grown more than ever these past four years in so many different ways, and I'm excited to see how my life-giving roots can take me through the rest of my life. You did it, Doc. You broke me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for teaching me more about myself than anyone else ever can. Thank you, and goodbye. <laughs>